welcome back to the channel and as you know my name's Ingrid currently trying for baby number six and we've had quite a lot of bumps along the way as you know we've had a couple of miscarriages a chemical a few cycles ago and now I'm on cycle six after my miscarriage that I had in May so welcome back to the channel Merry Christmas if you've not subscribed to my channel please do because it's a really exciting TTC channel and we could be friends and chit chat ovulation two week wait symptoms miscarriage loss and hopefully pregnancy symptoms if I am pregnant now I've just had my last little reflexology at Jan's it's Christmas the 23rd of December today so it's really exciting for everyone but also very hectic um, I wasn't gonna have a reflexology I try and like calm it all down the week before Christmas but do you know what we might be going into lockdown again I'm lucky enough that I'm in tier 2 so is Jan so we've been able to sort of still see each other and her salon's still open which is great but it's her last day today until the 5th of January I'm booked in again just in case I'm not pregnant um, even if I am in early stages of pregnancy, I will have reflexology, but again, as you know what I've talked about earlier, she doesn't um, do reflexology over the ovarian, the fallopian tubes, the womb area, anything like that whilst I'm pregnant or trying to be pregnant in the two week wait. She's very experienced, but anyhow, I wanted to go to her because I think getting the adrenals going with all the blood flow is terribly important for the early, especially the early stages of pregnancy. Um, I hope to be pregnant as you know we've been trying bloody ages and Vashti my tarot card reader saw that I was pregnant in my last reading in September and I wasn't I was pregnant but unfortunately it was a chemical where I tested at 11 DPO with a very faint line tested 12 DPO with a slightly stronger line but by 13 and 14 DPO it was almost blank um, and then I came on 15 DPO, so I was one day late. Um, well, I, th I think I came on, sorry, 16 DPO because I tested 11 DPO, got a very, very faint squinter, 12 DPO is slightly darker, 13 DPO still there, but not darker at all, 14 DPO light as, 15 DPO blank, and then I came on my period. That's how I know it was a chemical. So fertilization took place, so the seed and the egg were there. Um, something happened but the implantation started to maybe get, get to that point but within a few hours it was over before it began so if I'd have just tested the day my period was due or the day after my period it would have been a negative test and then I'd have come on my period and not known but they don't count chemical as a loss like scientifically it's a loss to anyone going through the TTC journey it's heartbreaking because if you're really on it like us lot are we're watching channels all the time we're probably testing as soon as we get to 9 to 10 dpo which has its downfall guys because you can not only spend a lot of money on pregnancy tests you sort of do the tests and you're upbeat for like so long and then your dreams are crashed if you're testing really early you can sort of look at it positively thinking well i'm not due on my period yet there's still time um but a car just pulled right out in front of me without looking that is why and she's in, not even indicating now going around the corner Range Rover driver I'm not specifying I love Range Rovers but I'm not being funny she's on her flipping mobile phone tinted windows just pulled out in front of me luckily I'm only doing 25 miles an hour and like I say that's why my vlogs are very stoppy starty because my full I've got my full eyes on the road and I occasionally glance to you guys. Silly woman, she's all over the road. I'm not surprised, she's probably either in a rush to get somewhere or I don't know, maybe had too many mince pies with brandy in. Anyway, I can't even remember what I was saying, that shocked me. Right, so yeah, we've been trying for quite some time since September 2018, but as you know guys, I stopped trying in the October because I was gender swaying then oh, sorry I'm distracted because she slowed right down and gave me a filthy look but I'm sorry I knew if I wasn't going 25 miles an hour if I was doing the proper 30 miles an hour I was allowed I'd have hit her anyway yeah so we took a bit of time out during the first bit of TTC because I was gender swaying on the Chinese gender calendar but then it got past Christmas and I was pregnant it only took three months and I miscarried at six and a half weeks 
well actually it was about six weeks I think really crushed and gutted probably took my hormones a good three months to get back to normal carried on trying took another eight months to fall fell in oh had the mole removed which was a bit like intrusive because I had anti anesthetic it was a melanoma hi Amy amazing dermatology nurse got in touch with me because I was a bit worried about the itching and sensitivity around my scar tissue thinking oh my god I hope it's not cancer again she's like it no it's perfectly normal what you're feeling made me feel so much better even though I had seen the practitioner and the dermatology person who removed it and he said honestly Ingrid there's no signs of it back and you've got the all clear but thank you Amy Amy Jenner who follows me she made me feel so much better but yeah so I had all that going on so we sort of relaxed a bit on the TTC during the September to November last year because of the mole scenario got back on it sort of January time got really full on in my plant-based diet and my vitamins fell pregnant in lockdown March time and bloody miscarried again totally gutted as I was again six weeks realized there must be some sort of problem there the eggs there the sperm's there either my egg is a bit old and duff um, or not good quality needs a bit of tweaking maybe maybe Aaron needed to lose a little bit of weight because he wasn't cut the stone overweight and the sperm maybe not be good quality or maybe um, my progesterone levels are low so every time implantation happens it's fine for about a week and then it just needs a boost and the boost won't there because you can't really find a lot of progesterone in foods yes it's in seeds nuts foliage and that but you do sometimes need a boost if you're slightly older or if you've maybe got PCOS and it's good to get it looked into properly but I didn't really want to spend time having blood tests and God knows what because they're done privately they cost me a lot of money um, and it was lockdown so there's super you know there's so many things in place at hospitals now that I didn't really just want to go for an ovarian scan and a progesterone level check at a private hospital that's probably gonna cost me about 300 quid put me susceptible to COVID and then you know have to pay for it all so in May when I sadly miscarried I sort of tweaked all my vitamins myself waited the three or four months and then when I miscarried like beginning of June had my tarot card reading she said there's definitely baby number six happening it's definitely going to happen which made me feel great and then um i had a brilliant call with a gyno as you know september time who's allowed me progesterone i told her about the two losses i'd had within the two years of trying and now the chemical she was more than happy she's prescribed me a month's worth of progesterone she said as soon as i get a bfp to start in giant um vaginally inserting that into me twice a day morning and night and then phone them ASAP to book in a six to seven week scan to see if it is a viable pregnancy that can go forth or whether it's not that if obviously the pregnancy doesn't look great and doesn't look viable they will probably administer something to make me miscarry or I don't know what they do but because progesterone supports wholeheartedly a pregnancy and our body's natural way of getting rid is a miscarriage if it's not a viable chromosome egg or you know makeup you know chromosome issue or an egg issue or a sperm issue will be the reason you miscarry that is literally 90% of what happens if it's chromosome which is the egg defect or the sperm defect or the implantation be it progesterone or lining that is why we miscarry it's only like a 10% or something that is going to be anything you've done like a traumatic injury or something like that it is normally something's there so anyway we've gone for the progesterone but I've not had a test to say I lack that I am just really um, sort of diagnosing myself because I'm sort of saying I've miscarried twice at five to seven week gestation so I know the eggs there I know the sperm's there and so on so I am going over old ground a bit but it's just nice to get on here and have a little chat with you guys um, to sort of let reminisce on what I've been going through and sympathize and support you guys if you're going through the same um, so as you know I've already got five beautiful children I'm very blessed I'm entirely blessed with my family I know that I've got two beautiful girls three beautiful boys so I've even got like mixed sexed family it's not like I'm trying for a sixth to have a boy or a girl I'm more than happy with what I've got however I don't feel complete there's something inside of me that doesn't emotionally and physically feel complete I feel like I need another baby we both work my husband and I we both work extremely hard we're good parents we love our children very much and we can support them so it's not like I'm having a child and I can't financially or emotionally support another baby I can 
<clears throat> and I know there's a lot of people who have commented, you've got five, can't you be grateful? There's some of us who haven't. I, I don't wanna be judgmental on here. It's not for that and it's not to judge any one of you. I don't care if you want your ninth baby or your first baby. I wish you my whole friendship and my whole like sympathy when you go through loss and my whole support. Do you know what I mean? I don't think there's any rights and wrong. I think if you can emotionally and financially support another baby and you want it, you go for it. It's your body, it's yours and your partner's relationship. You've got to do what feels right. And my mum always said to me, when she had me, she want, couldn't wait to sell everything, like the Moses basket, the baby crib, everything. She said that was me done and dusted. She had no want whatsoever for another baby. She didn't like think, oh, I'll hang on to some of Ingrid's baby clothes. I may well want another. She said, I didn't really want another one after your brother, but that I wasn't 100%. She said, I sort of held on to a few baby bits, put them in the loft, bagged up. And we didn't really talk about babies for another two years. And then your dad really wanted a big family. I only wanted one. So we compromised on two and started trying for you when my brother Terry was three years old. <clears throat> so it took my mum quite a while. But she said when my brother was three, she then thought, you know what? It'd be nice for Terry to start school and me to be born. And she did go for it. And they fell pregnant pretty soon after, which is all great. Okay. But she always said, in your heart of hearts, and I've heard this from a lot of people, if when you have a baby, you are like cut and dry, I'm done and dusted. I know everyone feels like that in the first hour of giving birth, but within a day or two, you're like, I could do that again, this is wonderful, this is amazing. Literally, within, a, within 24 to 48 hours, you usually forget all the pain and hardship you've gone through in labor, and you realize you can do it again, your body is a warrior, and this is amazing, and yes, you'll do it again. That's how you normally feel. Well normally feel that's how I felt not everyone's the same some people have a baby and think Christ this was awful and it probably takes them six months to a year to get over it with my first I have to say it took me a long time to get over my birth I was like oh my god he's wonderful I'm so in love this is great but then it took me probably three or four months I had a terrible time with him because he's my only one that I had in hospital as in like a hospital birth because I didn't know what I was going to go through and it was horrible I hated it and it probably took me three or four months to think I can do this again but what we're saying is normally after you've had the baby six seven months later if you're packing all your baby stuff away to go in the loft there's normally something in you that probably wants another one Whereas, you know, or, but if you're like, no, get rid, go, give that to so-and-so, eBay this, do that, get rid of this, throw this down the dump, that usually means you're done and dusted. But something inside me has not switched off. I just want another baby. I'm desperate. I am absolutely desperate. I don't care if it's blue or pink. I just want a healthy little bundle blessed with me and I want to be healthy too. I know it's a lot to ask when I've got five, but like I say, I don't want to be judgmental on this channel. It's not me being greedy. It's just what I, as an individual human, want, would like. So, with that said and done, I am on 12 DPO today. I did do a test yesterday, an FR, and it was negative. Um, I was stupid doing it, I wished I'd never done it. Um, I never showed on any of my pregnancy tests at 11 DPO when I was pregnant, unless it was when I was miscarrying. Um, I did first morning wee, it was negative, and I stupidly did at 7 DPO. I had a cheapy strip and I did that. So I've done two tests, 7 DPO and 11 DPO negative. These are my symptoms. Loads of CM, like proper Vaseline texture, and loads of it. Like I've gone from wet where it's <laughs> slippery, slidey, loads of it. I needed three panty liners yesterday. Usually at this stage when I'm three or four days away from a period, I'm dry as. I usually like come off my period, have two or three days dry, then start getting that creamy, discharge which is, yeah, I'm like day six, day seven. Then by day nine, it sort of starts getting that light, egg whitey, slippery, fertile sort of CM. And by like 10, 11, it is my fertile sort of CM. I have that for about three days. And then I go back to maybe a couple of days creamy, and then I'm sort of dry. So this is the story. Fertile CM, the positive OPK was day 11. It was fairly dark. By late on day 11, it was very dark. We baby danced day 11 and day 12, didn't bother day 13, but I did this time something different. We baby danced for, I think it was nine days straight. So like from day seven of my cycle, right the way through to day 13, we baby danced. Didn't miss a day. We were knackered, but I think we did like eight days straight baby dancing. Um, and I think I ovulated between day 11 and day 12, and we definitely ticked the box day 11 and day 12. 
I could have probably ticked 13 as well to make sure, but anyway, I'm perfectly confident, like I said in my last vlog, baby dancing tick, prenatal vitamin check, that's all done. Symptom wise, loads of CM. I'm still like really wet down below. Got up this morning, really wet again. And it's like I say, it can go between like the Vaseline consistency. It's not gloopy and like, it's not gloopy and powdery. It is like creamy, wet CM. When I've been pregnant, before a miscarriage and during a healthy pregnancy, I've always had that. I always think that's a really good sign if you've got lots of wet CM leading up to your period, that is a good sign. I can't touch my nipples. They are through the roof painful. They have been painful since 5DPO, which prompted me to do the 7DPO test. I had little twinges and pangs at 5DPO and 6DPO, like twinges, loads of CM, and my nipples I can't touch. They are super sore, even today on 12DPO. And when I saw Kate, my friend, briefly to do a present swap a couple of days ago, I said to her, I've got really bad tummy cramps. And that would have been 10 DPO. Tummy aches subsided now, but I've got loads of CM, sore nipples. So that's how I'm at at the moment. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm going to get back to you when I have some news. I don't know whether I'm going to test. I just don't know if I am going to. I don't know whether to see it out because Boxing Day I'm due on. Um, I just don't know what to do yet, but I will get back on here if I get good news. Merry Christmas, guys. Happy New Year and love to all Friendship Tour. Let me know where you are on your journey. Bye, guys. So, I cut you off a bit short then because I was trying to get in my drive, but I thought as it's Christmas, I'll get the kids individually to say Merry Christmas from us as a family. I'm so excited. Look, this is what I do for my mum. Little hamper of all my homemade goodies. Been making jams, little jams. Hot chocolate stirrers for my friends, children. Pickled onions, people love these. They're such a good gift. And if you're hands on as well, it's super easy chutney. Literally, I make all of that October, November. And then the last week, like last week and this week, I've been making little chocolate lollipops and all ready to go. Sorry, I was cutting you off so short, I felt quite guilty. So I will be back if I have good news, but let me go to my individuals for a little happy Christmas message. Merry Christmas and a happy Merry Christmas, have a lovely year. Merry Christmas and a happy new year.